Anyone who is involved in the community is probably very familiar with the demon list. In case you are the super rare player who has no idea what it is, to put it simply, it's a list of the hardest rated demons in the game with players listed of who has managed to beat these levels. It is a competitive list in that you get points for getting a certain record or beating the level which is then tallied up with the global leaderboard. Over the years, this list has managed to become one of the most popular challenges to attempt in the game. The true beginning of this list began when levels like Cataclysm and Ice Carbon Diablo X were released. While these lists made back then were nowhere near as active as it is today, there were still some versions existing of these lists at the time. As a result, there also weren't that many players actively grinding the levels on these lists. The idea of trying to beat all the hardest demons was not truly a trend yet. Because of this, it is pretty easy keeping track of all the players beating these levels. Of course, there are many list grinders that are unknown in the community so covering all of them is impossible. However, there are a couple of them that were able to take out the hardest demons before anyone else, and yet, there are no memories of these players, nor who they were. While there are a number of players here that some of you might recognize, some of the players are generally unknown by almost everyone. These players supposedly were the first to beat or had the world record on some of the hardest demons at the time too. As such, this is where this video comes in, discussing the story of these forgotten top demon grinders. The first player that I was curious about was a name that very frequently pops up in the majority of the top 10 demons for a time, Sephir. Prior to the making of this video, all that I could say I knew about him was the only rated level he currently has, Sephir's Madness, which is just a strange Stereo Madness remake. But that was all I knew about him really. However, there is a pretty interesting story to be told about him. Sephir's career in the GD community didn't really have a clean start as one would think for a list grinder. Some of the first actions he was known for was using an exploit that allowed one to verify and make levels 100% by changing variables in GD files. In Sephir's case, he edited Stereo Demoness to be completed, one of the top 3 levels at the time. Pretty much back to back, Sephir also created a level called Dry Carbon Diablo X, a stupidly difficult level at the time which pretty evidently used the same exploit. Sephir was never really accused of these things however, given that the community was in a different time period back then. But Sephir wanted to make up for these decisions and ended up cleaning his account and confessing to people. After that, he truly began to build his reputation in the community. Sephir was the first player who caught players like Neptune and Nubus for cheating, as he found out how to spot speed hacking before anyone else in the game. The method of spotting this is pretty well known today, where the method that was found involved when speed hacking on mobile or PC, the trail would glitch out and not work properly. According to Sephir, by watching Neptune's video on Necropolis, it is noticeable to see his trail cutting out constantly throughout the video. There are no existing examples that can be shown on Nubis' end due to his channel and videos having been completely destroyed, but it is known fact that Nubis was a hacker and the mentioned method of detecting speed hack would have worked for sure. Alongside this, Sephir would make a name for himself in the earlier versions of the demon list which at the time only existed on the GD forums. Point to create had not been made yet. On an old version of the list from 4th of January 2015, Sephir had made contributions on the list to the entire top 15 hardest demons excluding Gloomy City and Simfactorial 8. He had 13% on Silent Club, which was insane at the time, the world record of 60% on Ice Carbon Dave Lakes, first victor of Necropolis, first victor of Twilight Step version 2, 57% on Cataclysm, keeping up with Sandstorms' current world record, and more. One immediate thing you will notice is the absence of video links on a fair few players. Back then, there were only two rules to levels being on the list and your record getting submitted to it. The levels had to be rated demons and it was a must to provide a screenshot of your record on the level. A video wasn't a demand as it is today. Some of you will probably immediately think that this is abusive or cheating, but you have to remember this is early 2015. The idea of cheating to gain publicity on the demon list wasn't really a thing yet. It had not grown this big yet. With that in mind, in Sephir's case he provided with videos on certain completions and runs, specifically completing Simpactorial 8, Clubstep EX, 69 on nerfed Stereo Demoness, and two videos acting as proof for his completion on Ice Carbon Resist. These runs were accomplished on a PC, which Sephir stated that he was a better player on a mobile device. The videos were mainly the attempts to clear up his legitimacy, even if that wasn't proven in the best way possible. Based on that, regardless if one believes Sephir to be legitimate or not, it can be pretty safe to say that Sephir established himself as an old school top demon grinder. Much like the aforementioned player, Crack in the earlier versions of the demon list also had some high records on some of the top demons back in the day. In Crack's case, he was supposedly the second player to have beaten Nerd Stereo Demoness. On top of that, he also had the record of 36% on Ice Carbon Diablo X, was one of the first victors of Deadly Clubstep, and at the time held the current world record of 15% on Silent Club. 
Unlike Sephir, though, who built his name through these completions on this list, Krak is generally more well known but for different things. Krak is more well known for his creations in Extreme Demons, specifically the former Top 1 Demon Bloodbath. It features some of the hardest ship sections that had ever been seen at the time. The most insane ship sections that had been seen at that point before came mainly from levels like Ice Carbon Diablo X. Due to the fame that Bloodbath managed to acquire, the names of the creators were easy to remember, hence this became what Krak was most well known for. There are more things Crack accomplished and did during his time in the game, however. There's yet another gameplay part that was made by Crack in a very well-known former Top 1 level, but unlike Bloodbath, this one was scrapped and replaced. On the level Artificial Ascent, he created a ship part very reminiscent of the one he made in Bloodbath. Crack once again made tight ship gameplay in tunnel-like structures. Viprin wanted to request Crack to make a ship part with more verticality, but by then, Crack had already quit the game, hence the part was scrapped and replaced by Synthic Alpha. In other creation products, he also collaborated with the Korean creator Majako on a level named Dubcore, where each creator built half of the level each. For brief mention too, Crack had a section in the Extreme Demon The Ultimate Phase, with Ship as the main gameplay gimmick once again. Outside of his records on the Demon list, he is also the co-host of the Foundation Geostorm, being the second ever member of the team, with Weo Weo Teo being the first, and Michigan the third. Other than this, there unfortunately isn't much else to be said about Crack. When Geostorm moved from Skype to Discord, Crack did not tag along with them. The last known interaction he had with the GD community was with Wii Wii Oteo in October 2017, regarding other topics. Ever since then, Crack disappeared from the community without a trace. Given the history Crack managed to build for himself, he is for sure worthy of a mention on this list as a forgotten top demon grinder. If you have an interest in star grinders, you have probably heard of Lunar Simg. He was one of the top 1 star grinders and stayed in that position from 20th of December 2014 to 26th of January 2015 until Exotic came in where both of them traded the top position with each other until August 2015. But outside of the star grinder list, Lunar Sim also made contributions to the old demon list. Whereas Sephir and Crack beat levels or got new world records on the levels up there, Lunar Sim verified some of the levels that were placed on the old demon lists. Examples of this would be his massive Sim Factorial level series, where Sim Factorial 8 and 9 were verified in late 2014 and rated Demon pretty quickly. The 10th level, Sim Factorial 10, was one of his verifications that would have been one of the hardest demons on the list if rated immediately, but unfortunately it took a couple of years before that happened. Upon the release date of 18th of October 2014, Sim Factorial 10 were considered impossible by a number of plays which paints a picture of how good Luna Sim was at the time. He was both a top star grinder and a top demon list grinder, a very rare combination nowadays. Verifying some of the top demons were not his only contribution to the demon list either, as he also beat some other levels on there. Lunar Sim was also the first victor of Neptune's Deadly Clubstep, evident of his DW pose on the 20th of September 2014. While the old demon list did not acknowledge the fact that this happened, given that only images of completing the level was enough, it is definitely worthy of a mention in this video. On top of that, there are more levels to testament on his skill at the game. Lunasim is known for having some of the hardest harder rated levels in the game, some of which were even re-rated to fit the difficulty. The most extreme example of this would be the level Fake of Doom, which was originally rated 6 stars but is today an insane demon. There are more examples however with this harder rated level with 7 stars called Hazy Blood, deemed as one of the hardest harder rated levels. Yet another level with a similar situation is Sacred Sanctuary, also rated 7 stars, with gameplay that is way more fit towards a level with demon rating. Lunasim was very fond of underrating a lot of his levels by calling them way easier than they probably are, which could just be him trying to show off or it's just a simple testament towards his skill in the game. In comparison to other list grinders that have gotten their achievements up there, Lunasim is for sure one of the more unique players. He is for sure more known as a star grinder, but downplaying his abilities on the hardest demons would be insulting. Therefore, he's worthy of a mention on this video. This player has had three different names over the years. The first name he was known for was Lightning, which was probably the least memorable name he used. He stuck with his username from the 12th of April 2014 to 28th of June 2015. At that point, he switched to his second username, Ariel, which he would stick to until 2nd of July 2016. His third username is one that some of you might recognize for something else entirely, which was Chaos, who has at multiple periods of time been an in-game moderator. The most recent time period where he had moderator status was between 28th of February to 15th of September 2020. During the time of 2014 to 2015, he managed to pull off some really impressive achievements. Some simple examples would be Sim Factorial 8 on the 6th of November 2014, Nerf Back a Mountain on the 10th of January 2015, 
27% on Ice Carbon Diablo Linux on the 28th of January 2015, 42% on All Cataclysm on the 9th of February 2015, with more. But this is not what KS became known for. Unlike a lot of others on this list, the quantity of achievements from this player is rather minimal, but the significance of them are pretty massive. There are two main achievements that KS became known for over the years. The first one was that he was one of the first players to beat Nerf Siri Demoness, but the difference that separates him from Sephir and Crack is that KS was the first player to have a video showcasing this achievement, allowing others to see the full level beaten. On the 8th of January 2015 was the version of Siri Demoness beaten with footage, and KS became known in the community as a result. The next big achievement KS would bring forth to the community would be a level release, one of which was put on the demon list when released. The level was called Horntail Cave and had a number of things in the level that made it stand out significantly. One of which was how the gameplay was set up, in that it was one of the first top light demons that used a two player mode feature for difficulty. Nowadays it's not too special, but back then this was brutal. On top of the fact that the level itself was also pretty difficult, having a two player mode part at the end was a really rough challenge. In terms of being a top demon player though, other than Windy Circles and Horntail Cave 2 that were released a few years after these events, this is where Chaos' story as a top player ends. Regardless of this, the few achievements Chaos did are worthy of a significant mention, hence a player worth to remember. Here we have a player with probably one of the most impressive track record of them all over the years, mainly in the creating side. That being said though, there are a number of impressive completions that Woogie managed to achieve in 2014. On the 30th of August 2014, Woogie managed to beat Sin Factorial 8, which at the time were one of the hardest rated demons according to the old demon lists. Also back when Nerd Siri Demoness was number 3, Woogie on the 14th of September 2014 managed to get an impressive run of 65. Not only that, but on Sim Factorial 9, Rugi managed to get 42% on the 17th of September 2014. Even before Rugi's name began its popular reign, he was able to display significant skill in beating some of the hardest demons in the game at the time. But what Rugi excelled at, unlike any of the others on this list, was his creating skill combined with his incredible skill at the game. His first breakthrough in the community was through the release of Windy Landscape on the 15th of February 2015. Upon release, this was immediately put high on the demon list, and while it was never a top 1, it still broke the top half of the list. According to all versions of the list, it was placed above levels like Nerd Stereo Demoness and Horntail Cave, but that was not the only level we would release that would crack the top list, there are many more that can still be mentioned. Crystal of Miracle, Sequence, Endorphin, Colorful Overnight, Transonic, Melody of Violins, Retention, all of these levels have been on the demon list displaying Woogie's ability to release top demons as if it was nothing. Ever since 2.1 was released, his streak of level releases this difficult has slowed down significantly. The last list level that Woogie released was with Koreakur, another great Korean player, and together they released the level Libertas, which originally was on the extended list section of today. But due to the gameplay critiques the level got, Woogie and Koreakur wisely decided to nerf the level in order for it to be more enjoyable to other players, and also resulting in the level getting removed off the demon list. Very rare to see nowadays, but a very commendable decision. But even then, during Woogie's dominant creator phase in the 2015 to 2016 era of the community, his levels were not only revered as some of the hardest demons to attempt at the time of release, it was also really great levels with a lot of high quality decoration and memorable gameplay sections. Woogie was not only a contributor to top demons for over two years, but made fun and great levels on top of that, something I'd say a lot of creators for the demon list should aspire to do the same. Woogie remains remembered for someone who could release top demons at the time and made some of the best insane slash extreme demons in the game. Now, I know what you're thinking. Sigley was very likely not forgotten by barely anyone and his contributions to the demon list, beating multiple top ones and being the supposedly first victor on a lot of the hardest levels up there. You're correct about that. Sigley to this day is very well renowned and known for his achievements in the game with a legacy that is remembered to this day. However, there's a pretty significant difference between Cyclic playing in 2015 and playing in 2014, where there are a lot of different accomplishments that went under the radar. Unfortunately, because of how Cyclic's channels that contain most of the old informations are now gone, and Cyclic's GW account is also terminated, there's close to nothing to be found regarding Cyclic's reign in 2014. As such, most of the resources will only be references through fan wikis or other sources. In Cyclic's era during 2014, Cyclic was well known as a top star grinder, being in the top 50 for quite a while. He even had the top 1 spot at certain points, but it only resulted in briefly challenging and eclipsing Sari in late March and again in late April 2014. When it comes to level achievements in 2014, there are a few of them that are rather significant. Probably the most impressive one out of these is on the GW post talking about the Hell series, where Cyclic mentioned that it took him about a month to get 84 on all the Hell zone. 
So I've achieved this back in 2014 is an insane achievement, but unfortunately there's not an image or video showing that he actually accomplished this. Oddly enough, Sickly's supposed skill level in 2014 is rather improportional to players who were trusted to be legitimate at the time. The parallel from Cyclic in 2015 to 2014 is the lack of trying to show off his full capabilities and treats it as if it is something casual. Another accomplishment done very early on by Cyclic was beating Ice Carbon Zist, showcasing the completion screen at the very end of the level. Unfortunately, all evidence of this existing is through this image that exists for a preview of a deleted GW post. As many would expect, the small preview image you see would suggest that Cyclic used a secret way to accomplish this achievement. This is also influenced further by a conversation Cyclic had with Super SNSD at the time, with Cyclic mentioning that the only part that's difficult is the ship part at 40%. Around the same time, Cyclic managed to verify his first ever level, Ice Cream, which when uploaded was easily a top 15 hardest demon when released, which is a pretty impressive feat to accomplish for your first level. Unfortunately, there's no sign of a video or image showcasing the verification of Ice Cream in 2014. There's a video showing Cyclic rebeating their level, but that was only in 2015, or later when this happened. So the verification of the level itself is once again a mystery. Another fact worth mentioning is a certain Q&A Cyclic did before May of 2015. On the Geometry Dash fan wiki, there's a section talking about a Q&A on Cyclic's old channel, discussing a notable question of what's your hardest demon. At the time, Cyclic had claimed to have beaten Cataclysm and was not yet caught for hacking, as many expected the answer to be that level, but instead answered with the Hell Zone. The remake did not exist yet at that point, and the idea that someone had beaten original The Hellzone even back then would have been an insane achievement. Unfortunately, this topic was never elaborated further other than the remake that would show up in 2016, which I ended up verifying in summer that year. Majority of this being deleted is probably the result of Cyclic wiping his name out entirely back in 2016 when he originally confessed to hacking. As such, a lot of this can only be shared as stories and not actual facts as most of the references are gone. It felt necessary to speak on Cyclic's playing career in 2014 though, since even that had some pretty big accomplishments much like his more popular time in the game during 2015 to 2016. He may not have been a forgotten top demon this grinder, but parts of his story has now been revitalized. This player here is probably the most unique player on this list as he was never considered as a player that accomplished something major on the demon list in the same way as the others on here. Even then, consider him an honorable mention though, since what he has managed to achieve over the years is quite spectacular and unheard of. In terms of the demon list, there are a few significant levels that Super SNSD managed to beat. On the 27th of January 2014, Super SNSD managed to beat an old demon named Ice Hell Cave, a demon in the top 15 hardest demons list at the time. Much like Ice Carbon Zust, most players who beat this level utilize a secret way, and Super SNSD is no exception, but impressive regardless. Another top demon Super SNSD managed to beat at the time, two days later, was To The Grave, one of the former top 1 demons which back in late January was also in the top 15 hardest demons. During March 2015, Super SNSD managed to beat two impressive demons at the time, one of which, much like To The Grave, was a former top 1 demon. On the 2nd of March 2014, he beat a level that was among the top hardest demons called It Is Really Hard, a today unrated demon that was deemed as one of the hardest at the time. The most prominent level out of the two though was Demon World, which he managed to beat a few months after it was top 1 hardest demon, specifically on the 9th of March 2014. But probably the most impressive feat that Super SNSD managed to achieve was maintaining his rank on the Global Star leaderboards. The first image showing Super SNSD on the Global leaderboards was on the 1st of January 2014 and would remain there for 16 months until he would only just slightly fall out of the top 50s. The only reason this happened is because of his Super SNSD needing to attend the Korean military service, forcing him to stop playing. He would eventually fall out of top 100 leaderboards in early 2016, but would eventually return to the top 100 by summer 2016. Ever since then, it has been difficult to keep track of which position he has been in at what point, but it can be easily assumed that he has remained in the top 100 ever since, being an active starground in the game for over 5 years since his return in 2016. Super SNSD has spent nearly 7 years being a top 100 star grinder and is still going strong, when writing the script is sitting at the 33rd spot. Super SNSD has never taken a top spot, but in multiple images back in the day you can see his name sitting at the top 5 spots multiple times. Super SNSD has never taken a top spot, but in multiple images back in the day you can see his name sitting at the top 5 spots multiple times. With this player not only remaining in the top 100 on the global leaderboards for the majority of 7 years, he has also managed to conquer some of the top 20 demons at the time when beating them. Super SNSD is an incredible player, and it is a pleasure to be able to talk about him in a video, well worthy of the title of a former top demon. Grinder.
Alright, so here we have probably the biggest meme out of the entire Korean community at this point. But given his status that he gained at the time, this is simply something I have to mention as a forgotten top demon in this grinder. Pretty much everyone knows by now that Sari was not legitimate, and looking back at what he claimed is genuinely funny. But we'll take a proper look at this and we'll see what he claimed. Sari is responsible for a ton of different insane achievements at the time, and some of them are almost outrageous. Probably the biggest achievement Sari claimed to have pulled off is beating the first three original Hell series levels, the Hell Zone, the Hell World, and the Hell Dignity. With the Hell Zone, Sari supposedly managed to beat a level a day after it was released, showcasing the completion screen on the 11th of January 2014. As for the Hell World that was released on 12th of January, Sari claimed that it was easier than the Hell Zone, which was already a stupid statement, but not only that, the images Sari uploaded suggest that he managed to beat original The Hell World on a mobile device in approximately 7 hours. Right. On a mobile device with 30 hertz, most likely, and on the very day the level was released, without a completion video that did not show up for the first time ever until September 2020 by me. As for the Hell Dignity, Seri wouldn't immediately attempt to beat it when it was released on 22nd of January 2014, but waited until 25th to begin making mentions of it. The first post speaks about how the comments posted in the image and how everyone feels about the existence of the Hell Dignity, including Zeri and Denim. Then literally three and a half hours later, Seri beat the Hell Dignity like it was nothing. Seri is for sure the reason the Hell series was as popular back in the day as it was. He was the most popular player figure at the time and showcased himself beating these levels with relative ease. The thank you comment in the Hell World's level description is a statement from Son924 thanking Zeri for making the series as popular as it became. With the Hell Origin, however, there were no big mentions of it from Zeri other than a brief mention of supposedly the entire Hell series being rated, but whether Zeri ever attempted Origin is unknown. Outside that, there are some other achievements that Zeri honestly downplayed a fair bit. On the 9th of September 2014, Zeri revealed some of his completed levels which showcased, at the time, all of Neptune's release levels with Hexagon Force version 2 being his current last completed. Sari showed off all 25 levels and revealed that he had managed to beat them all, including Deadly Clubstep, which was one of the hardest humans to attempt at the time. Sari didn't really glorify that completion in the same way as the Hell series. Yet another relatively impressive feat at the time was Sari's practice run on the nerf back of Mountain with 34 attempts, which back then was quite incredible. Two of his own levels that was glorified a whole lot when released were Collaboration and Red World. Collaboration was, as the level name implies, a collaboration between Zeri and other Korean creators. This level took around 8 months for play to be because of the infamous ending built by Zeri himself. The assumed first Victor collaboration is done by Pallery on the mobile device on the 11th of April 2015, which did not have a recording, but did have the completed level screen. Pallery proved that he achieved this on a computer by getting 98% on recording it. Literally the only reason it took so long is because of how everyone made very easy collab parts except for Zeri, who made something near impossible at the time. On top of that, Seri put this part at the very end, which is horse on a completely different level. And as if that level wasn't enough, before Zeri would disappear from the community, he would release his most infamous level, Red World, on the 7th of October 2014, which upon release was considered impossible by pretty much everyone. While today this is nothing particularly special, back then it was something barely anyone could do consistently. Even Neptune's practice run of 27 attempts was deemed impressive, who ended up redecorating Red World in the future. While this practice run has since then been confirmed to be speed height, this still puts the level's difficulty back in 2014 to 2015 into perspective. This would end up being the last level Zeri ever worked on and disappearing from the community when 2.0 was released, leaving a comment saying simply, sometimes. Context of this was unknown, but it is assumed to be that he sometimes played the game, but not as actively as he used to. Nowadays, Zeri probably does not play at all. If you're still someone that believes Zeri is legitimate, although very unlikely anyone believes that, here's something that will probably change your mind. The very first long level that Seri verified was Hate War on the 19th of March 2014, which was never rated but there is a situation here that paints Seri's legitimately in a different light. The original upload of this level is now gone because originally Hate War was physically impossible to beat. The level was not properly playtested and because of this, the ball timing at 80% was impossible to get around. Around two months later, Seri made a new upload of Hate War named Hate War Fix Ver, which essentially just fixes the 80% problem and changes the song. If that doesn't scream suspicious, I don't know what does. With that being said though, much like Sephir and how there are a number of things he confessed to hacking, I don't think Seri hacked everything either. Most of his biggest achievements are pretty suspicious, but at the time he was not deemed a hacker, but deemed as a top player. Alas, while his reputation has been somewhat tarnished over the years, one cannot deny the impact Seri had as a player back in 2014.
This creator is more an honorable mention rather than a mention for a top demon grinder since Neptune never really did any grinding of that kind. There are two levels that Neptune claimed to have beaten at the time outside of his own levels that were fairly significant. The most significant level was Angel Demon, deemed as one of the hardest demons upon release and to this day, some parts in that level to this day still look rather precarious. Neptune supposedly beat this level on the 10th of May 2014. Another level Neptune supposedly beat was one of the Sim Factorial levels, although one of the non-demon ones, Sim Factorial EX2, beaten on the 14th of September 2014. But these two levels is it really. Other than the one practice run on Red World and the Serio Demonist practice run, Neptune doesn't really give off the impression that he cared much for specific levels released by others. He instead aimed to release some of the hardest levels in the game, and boy did he do that. Back in 2014, Neptune as a creator was easily one of the most well-regarded and infamous creators in the game. He was mainly known for his V2 series, where Neptune would be making revitalized versions of Ropto's main levels, doing proper and good buffs that step out of the comfort zone, trying to expand further while still utilizing the new features. It even caught Robtop's attention where Rob himself actually recorded a video of him beating the level, uploaded to his main YouTube channel. Outside of these levels though, there are two incredibly well-known levels that Neptune would release which was easily some of the hardest demons to attempt upon release. These levels are called Necropolis and Deadly Clubstep. Deadly Clubstep was released on the 7th of July 2014, a month before the 1.8 update and this was one of the hardest demons to attempt when released. The first victor of this level would be Lunasim, which was more than two months after the level's original release. Riot's completion of this level is probably the most well known and it took him an approximate of 17,000 attempts to originally beat it. Neptune would however step up his game in the 1.8 update releasing his most infamous level, Necropolis, released on the 28th of September 2014. It wouldn't be until a player named Elite beat Necropolis with a proper recording on the 14th of March 2015, almost half a year after the level was originally released. Necropolis remained on the top 10 for over a year and would remain in the top 50 until February 2017. Ever since then, however, Neptune would end off his creating career by creating Theory of Everything 2 version 2 and disappearing without a trace. The only remnants anyone would see of the real Neptune again comes from when he came back to call out an impersonator, but that was it. On top of that, ever since Neptune quit playing, it has been incredibly obvious looking at his videos how they are specifically cut. Nevertheless, it is worth giving Neptune a small mention on this list due to his influence in the community as a creator, even reaching Robtop's attention. Out of every player I have mentioned on this list so far, Lu Ye is by far the most influential player that I have left to talk about. Given that players like Cyclic and Zeri are on there, that might come across as a bit of a surprise, but hear me out. If you've ever heard of the name Lu Ye, you probably know him as a creator more than anything, who has parts in levels like Yadagurasu, Night Terrors, Grind Fury, and more recently, his solo level project, Dubcore X. Outside of that though, Luya doesn't have much in terms of huge achievements, but there are a couple of impressive records that was done. Luya at the time managed to get 14% on Silent Club, 1% behind Crack's record, 40% on Ice Carbon Diablo X, 68% on Nerd Stereo Demonness, 50% on Necropolis, and 43% on Ice Carbon Zist. Luya also claimed to have beaten Ice Cream when it was still uploaded and rated, but unfortunately no video of his can be found. Much like Super SNSD though, Lugia's contributions are much more unique than the others on this list. In this instance, what Lugia achieved for the community is much grander than one would expect. The old versions of the demon list that I have been showing has been keeping a secret this whole time. The earliest version of that list, that had Silent Club, Ice Carbon Diablo X, and Stereo Demonist in its top 3, was made by none other than Lugia himself. There are earlier versions of top lists like these on the GW list, which showcases some interesting levels like Stereo Demoness, Silent Club, Primary Maze, Back on Mountain, Clubstep EX, Apologist, and more. But none of these lists ever kickstarted the true trend for attempting to beat these levels. In the GW forms, these were mainly lists showcasing what was deemed to be the hardest demons, and that's it. But with the creation of Lugia's list, it is what managed to spark a chain of events that would lead to become what the demon list is today. Lugia's last revision of his list was last recorded on the 4th of January 2015, and because of Lugia's inactivity with the list at the time, another player would then seek to carry the demon list on. That player was Fresternock, who on the 17th of March 2015, created a new version of the demon list that was improved on a number of different aspects. For the next three months, Fresternock would be consistently updating the list when new records and new levels showed up, with the most up-to-date version of this list was on the 19th of August 2015. 
However, Fresno not will not keep up with updating his list accurately after these past few months, and as a result, the first true demon list will be born, hosted by Riot and more. As many know from this point on, the list would only grow from here and become one of the most sought after challenges to attempt to beat. Years later, this list would evolve into having its own website, and to this day is still one of the most popular challenges in the game. All of this kickstarted because of Lugia's first list. While some could argue that someone else could have easily created a list within time, and that it was only inevitable that this challenge showed up, I disagree. While it definitely could have showed up within time, that is just a matter of perspective. The idea of beating top demons were not a trend in any way until these lists began showing up that were listing players records and Luya's list was the first ever iteration attempting to do this on a wide scale. The motivation for a ton of players to play in today's day and age comes from the demon list, the original idea by Luya. Luya is the reason a ton of players are playing today, and that level of influence on a community can't go unnoticed. Luya deserves to be remembered as a top player, and so much more. That concludes the end of this video. Big shout out to my Patreons Maxen, Hemsey, Brody Young, Cenox50, and KPT Dylan, allowing them access to all my videos early. Thank you all so much for watching my content, and I will see you all in the next video.